We've got some news content for you this morning, and it's brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. They are located at 114th and Davenport. Uh, They are located virtually at eaglemortgagecompany.com. And they're in the mortgage business, but they're not a bank. Basically, they're a mortgage broker. So they shop a variety of banks to which they have access on your behalf. And so they try to find the best lending solution for you. We know, and Eagle Mortgage Company knows, that for most people, the biggest thing they buy in their life is a house. And we only buy a handful of houses in our lives. You want to make sure you get it right, and that's why Eagle Mortgage Company is the choice for you. Eagle Mortgage Company soars above the other, and they won't make you soar. And so our first news item on this week's report uh, is... uh, Involving a legendary organization in our city, the Peter Kiewit Foundation, which has uh, donated about a billion dollars for programs and projects in uh, Nebraska and Western Iowa uh, since it was started in 1980, the year following Peter Kiewit's death. Uh, They are going to wind down. And the goal is to uh, have the organization done dissolved and over by the year 2030. And that means in the next five years or so, six, uh, the Peter Kiewit Foundation needs to donate about $500 million. Hate that. And so what we are expecting would be a a very big increase in in, uh, the types of things they're going to be doing. It's actually kind of exciting. And, And the thought here is that uh, when Peter Kiewit set this thing up toward the end of his life, he did not see this as a uh, ongoing thing that would operate in perpetuity. He saw it as a 25 to 50 year thing. Well, the year 2030 is the 50 year anniversary of the foundation. And so the thought is, and and, and what and what Pete said before his death. I like your one on one with them. I've always called him Pete. Okay. And uh, of course, I was 10 when he died. But. So what, what, he, what he had said was that you always have to open it up for the next generation of leaders, for the next generation of donors. So this foundation had typically been distributing about 25 to $50 million a year in annual grants. And, and they had done, and they've been, you know, a lot of education, a lot of those sorts of things. But around here in, in the Grow Omaha universe, we really talk about them with, um, or in relation to all of these donations they've made for big urban core projects. Absolutely. Like most recently, they donated $55 million to the Riverfront Parks, and um, they've supported so many other, you know, so many other big projects. And so the question is, what are they going to do? Because um, they have probably some big things up their sleeves. And with, uh, you know, at $480, $490 million, whatever it is they have left to get rid of over the next five years, you could see some very impressive building projects that could have lead gifts from this winding down Keywood Foundation. I think one thing's for sure, Jeff. Well, number one is thank you to all the stakeholders and all of the administrators and uh, Mr. Key, as I used to call him. Um Thank you, thank you, thank you. And one thing's for sure is that Omaha and the citizens of Omaha and Council Bluffs will definitely benefit. And some of the other big projects over the years uh, to which the Peter Kiewit Foundation has donated include the CHI Health Center Omaha Arena Convention Center, uh, the um, uh, Charles Schwab Field, the Bob Carey Missouri River Pedestrian Bridge, Holland Performing Arts Center, Steelhouse Omaha. And you may have heard of a thing called the Kiewit Luminarium. Uh, right. They made a nice donation there. The recent Joslin Art Museum um, expansion. So if they are involved in those types of organizations and now suddenly they need to donate $480 million in five years, watch out. It could be pretty cool. Well, the other thing that's cool, and, and there's so many others that we, we don't have time to name, but... Um, I was asking, actually ran into Brenda Council, former um, city councilwoman, OPS board member, and I said, what's the best charitable organization in North Omaha? And she said it was the Lozier Foundation. And I know it is an incredibly well-run organization. That's one of them. The Bob Doherty, Robert Doherty Foundation is huge. They donated to the park. There's so many of these, and, and Heritage Foundation um, Omaha Community Foundation. Yeah, and, and uh, Heritage Omaha, I should say. Trenton B. Maggot Foundation. Trenton B. Maggot Foundation is out there. It's a little bit smaller than some of these. but I have uh, never heard of it. But. Well, I, what I like to do when I donate is if, if you go to some of these places, some of these edifices, and it says anonymous at the top, that's me. 
I always hear that the uh, the Trenton B. Maggot Foundation isn't really a foundation. Jeff seems to think that, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? I hear it's just an account at the Omaha Community Foundation. It's a small account there, but there are other. There's also a Trenton uh, B. Maggot Fund uh, at the Jewish Federation of Omaha. And uh, there's there's might be a couple others, and there might be some direct gifting. You should try it. Well, I say, you know, I can't be too hard on you because uh, there's not even an account named the Jeff Beals Foundation. That's true. And if you you can see that at Jeff's bio, so on at, our website, uh, Creighton University has started construction on a future softball stadium on the southeast corner of 20th and Cumming Street. So there's a lot of Creighton construction going on in that corridor. So okay, picture 20th and Cumming Street if you can, southeast corner. Creighton building a new softball stadium. To the west of that, there is construction going on on another square block. That is going to be the Creighton University Sophomore Residence Hall. And then to the west of that is the Dental College, which has been around for several years. So you have the Dental College, then the next block to the east is going to be the future residence hall, then the softball stadium. But wait, there's more. To the east, southeast of this softball stadium, Creighton's going to build a baseball practice field and an indoor training center that will go all the way over to about 17th Street. Well, once you get to 17th Street, that's when you get into the Noddle Company's Builders District, where Noddle Companies has built most of what will be a park. It's done, but the final amenities aren't in there, and it's not open to the public yet. And there's talk that there could be some really cool things going into that area. So you're seeing what appears to be the start of literally an avalanche of development in that Builders District Creighton University campus. Some pretty exciting stuff. One point of order, though, about this, while the Creighton varsity softball team will play in this new stadium, the baseball thing is just a practice field. They will still play their games at Charles Schwab Field. That whole Builders District, it's like it's it's been like unburdened by what will be. I beg your pardon? That's what I keep saying. Okay, so crews are demolishing a house or three houses on the southeast corner of 38th Avenue and Dodge Street in the Blackstone area. We've had a lot of Grow Omaha listener subscribers write in saying, what's going on there? What's going on there? Because they were pretty cool old historic houses, so that part's unfortunate. Um, but uh, they were across the street from a Taco Bell, so it's not like it was any sort of uh, you know district or anything. And in its place, an organization called Skylark Development is building a $22 million seven-story building with 131 apartment units. Now, the lower couple levels of this building will be indoor parking. So I think you'll end up with about five, four or five levels of, of actual apartments. But this continues the trend of greater density in the urban core, kind of on the northern edge of the Blackstone District. It'll be between the orbit and the streetcar. This is the type of stuff that we're going to see there, and this is what allows us to, you know, make the urban core denser and allow the city to be more economically healthy. Transit-oriented districts. TOD. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.